everybody, my name is Jess and welcome to the Sally Tomato YouTube channel. Here you normally find sewing tutorials, but today I want to share some craft projects. I think we all need a break from some bigger projects every now and then, but also craft projects are great to use up some of your scraps. So today I have a fun lineup of inspirational projects using items that I found at the Dollar Tree, the thrift store, and things that I already had at home. I've added the timestamps below for each of the projects so you can jump around to the tutorials that you want to watch. I've also added links to all the supplies that I used. So without further ado, let's get started. This project may be my favorite thrift flip yet. So I found these two boxes at the thrift store. I was inspired by a Studio McGee checkerboard pattern trinket box that was available at Target and I wasn't a fan of the price and I knew I could replicate that look. The boxes were sort of metallic and almost appeared to be made out of shells and have an opal gold tone color scheme to them. I just loved the look. So I spray painted each of the boxes gold. Then I took some scraps of our rustic pearl cork fabric. I love the texture of the cork and I think it went so well with the theme of this box. I cut small three quarter inch square pieces of the cork fabric. After the boxes were completely dry, I got to work with my hot glue gun. I started in one corner and I glued each of the squares in place. What I would recommend is positioning at least one row and one column of squares first and that way you kind of get an idea for the spacing. I realized this about halfway through the row, but I was able to space the gaps pretty similarly. Once the squares are completely glued to the lid, place the lid on the base of the box, and then you can figure out the spacing for your squares on the base. So you wanna make sure that each of the columns and the rows are evenly spaced just like the top, and then you'll repeat for the larger box if you're doing a larger box. I think the boxes were very pretty as they were, but I wanted to add a little bit more of texture and blend the cork fabric in with the gold metallic box. So I have three different colors of folk art metallic paint. I took two different gold tones and they also had a white pearl tone. Then I took a damp paper towel and blotted the paint all over the cork and the box itself to kind of blend the cork with the background color of the box. You'll want to smooth out the paint in some areas but then leave larger blotches in others to give that depth and texture and have that shell-like appearance of the inspiration photo. This project did take longer than I anticipated as well but what a fun way to use up scraps. You could certainly choose a variety of colors to use or place the squares in a different pattern that's repeating. These boxes cost me about $2 each from the thrift store. I'm so happy with the results and honestly, I will cherish these boxes forever because I made them myself. Next on my list of DIYs, I wanted to make a faux pottery lamp. These are so popular right now. They have an aged look. Here are some inspiration photos from designer websites with outrageous price tags. I found this lamp at my local thrift shop for only $10, plus the yellow tags were half off, so I got this for $5. My son Jax wanted to help with this project, so we mixed together some black and brown acrylic paint to give it a softer look, and he added the base coat to this lamp. Way to go, Jax! Some of my video clips got misplaced on my phone, so let me explain to you what I did. I took a damp paper towel and I rubbed on a mixture of gray, brown, and cream paint around the base. I know it's tempting to add so many layers and texture at one time, but you wanna make sure that you add one coat at a time and slowly the layers will start to build up. On the top and the bottom of the lamp, I wanted it to really look aged and worn because those are the areas that would have a lot of handling and distress areas on them. So I took some lighter cream and brown and simply dabbed it on with my damp paper towel. And here's how it turned out. I switched out the lampshade for a different one that I found at the thrift store for only $3 and all together for $8 plus some paint that I had at home, this lamp looks like a high-end designer lamp. 
Decorative objects are super popular right now for side table, entryway table, and shelf styling. So I wanted to try something super simple. I took three leftover paint sticks and I trimmed off the shaped edge. Then I took some Rust-Oleum metallic spray paint and spray painted each of the paint sticks. This was my inspiration photo for this project. So I took some permanent glue and glued the pieces together just like my inspiration photo and I think it turned out great. This project cost me absolutely nothing and it was super quick. I love the results and no one will ever know that you DIY'd it. For this project, I saw this inspiration bowl online and I thought how easy to recreate it with some items from the thrift store. So I thrifted these two bowls. Well, one is a bowl and one is a saucer for a teacup. And I simply took some permanent glue. I used Loctite brand and glued the two pieces together. Once the piece was completely dried, I painted the entire outside with a white acrylic paint and added a few coats, making sure to let it dry between the coats. Next, I took some black acrylic paint, a light brown, and also a beige. I took a damp paper towel and dabbed it into each of the colors and started to blot around the entire outside of the bowl. I blended the paint in a few spots, but I left some of those harsh looking paint spots around the outside to make it have that aged look just like the inspiration bowl that I had found. I did leave some globs of paint in some areas to give it some 3D texture. This is one of my favorite pieces that I have DIY'd. I absolutely love it. We keep it on a shelf in our kitchen now. And for less than $2 and some acrylic paint and a little bit of time, I think this DIY was a success. Another popular piece of decor are aged vessels or aged vases. So I wanted to try it myself. This vase was half off at the thrift shop, so I got it for only $2. I took some Rust-Oleum Satin Canyon Black Spray Paint and gave it a good coat on the outside and also the inside, and also around the top of the inside. While the paint was still wet, I tested rubbing some sand on the outside of the vase. This didn't work very well. After more research and trial and error, I found out that rubbing mud on the outside of the wet paint would have worked a lot better. So anyway, after the first coat of paint and sand was dry, I added on a second coat to cover up the sand and have that rough texture. I wanted to add some handles. I cut two pieces of Sally Tomato Faux leather, two inches wide by six inches long. There are two different ways that you can make these handles. You can fold each of the raw edges to the center, so there'll be folds on each side edge or a little bit more of a beginner friendly method. You can simply fold each piece in half and match the raw edges, but you will have the raw edges on one end. I'm going to fold my edges to the center and simply top stitch down the center of each side to secure the fabric in place. These handles will not be functional. They're only decorative. So I took some hot glue and permanent glue and added a little bit on each short end of the handle. And first I glued the top in place. You'll want to hold it a few seconds to let the hot glue dry. And then you can position the bottom of the handle so that way it's to your liking. When you add the second handle, just make sure that the handles are straight across from each other and you'll want the shape of each handle to match. And here's how my vase turned out for $2. I added some artificial eucalyptus branches and I think this looks super high end. For the next project, we're going to be making twine wrapped canisters with a faux leather handle. I found these canisters at my thrift store. They were very affordable. I see these all the time left over from holidays. Maybe they used to have treats inside them. So pick two that you like. I knew I was gonna wrap these in twine, but I didn't want the print of the canister to show through. So I did spray paint the taller one with the shells white just to prime it and prepare it for the twine. I took some scraps of faux leather from my stash of Sally's Tomato Fabrics 
and cut the pieces three quarter inch wide. Add some hot glue to the wrong side of each of the short ends and center it on top of one canister lid. Test it to see how you like it. You can always make them shorter or taller, however you want your handle to be. I ended up trimming the other piece for the second canister, but this is a fun way to use up those small little scraps of faux leather. I experimented with two different thicknesses of twine for this project. First I started with a thicker twine and I added the twine right next to the handle in the center and then I tightly wrapped and glued it all the way around the lid. After your lid is completely wrapped, you'll want to place it on top of the base so that way you know how far to start your twine. Then I wrapped the twine around the base of the canister. I made sure that the tail end curved towards the inside of the canister so that way when I came around with the second wrap it started to cover up that tail end. Make sure that you have lots and lots of hot glue on hand for this project. For the smaller canister I did use a smaller twine. This took a lot longer with the smaller twine. There was lots and lots more wraps but I think it turned out really cute. I love how these canisters coordinate but yet they're each different. I styled these in my living room. I have them on a side table next to a lamp and a plant. Honestly, they're just more decorative, but it would be nice to store small things like earbuds or in an entryway, you could store sunglasses, keys, whatever you like. These could even be fun in your craft room for storing various notions and craft supplies. I was inspired by this high-end vase to recreate a scalloped look on a mini base. So I thought I could use straws to recreate the texture and the shaping. I found this small cup at the thrift store and you'll wanna make sure that the cup has vertical edges that aren't curved or angled in any way. So that way when you go to glue on the straws, they're all vertical all the way around. So I started with the cup upside down because I wanted the top edge of each of the straws even. I used hot glue to secure the straws and then I took a razor blade to cut along the bottom edge and trim the straws even with the base of the cup. Next I added on a few coats of spray paint. I used Rust-Oleum semi-gloss and ivory bisque and I did opt to paint the top as well to hide the colored stripes of the straws. After it dried, I filled with a few artificial greens and I think it turned out really cute. I wanted to use that same straw technique from before. I saw this box on a designer site and I wanted to mimic that same scalloped look to create a little treasure box. I found this uniquely shaped box at the thrift store for only $1.99. I grabbed a big bag of straws from the Dollar Tree, and you'll also need lots of hot glue for this project. I was experimenting with the best way to do this, so I decided to cut straw lengths that fit around the base of the box. I glued these little lengths around the entire base of the box with hot glue, and I repeated the same method for the top of the box with smaller lengths of straw. After the box was completely covered in straws, I spray painted the entire box with this white spray paint. I used Rust-Oleum Ivory Bisque. I didn't like how you could see the opening of the straws around the top of the box, so I took some pearl cork fabric from Sally Tomato and I traced around the top of the box, then cut out the same hexagon shape as top of the box and hot glued it in place. To make this box look a little bit more vintage, I took a handle that I found at Hobby Lobby and simply unscrewed the screw from the bottom and hot glued the knob in place. You could certainly poke a hole through the lid of the box and actually screw the handle in place, but I meant for this box to be more decorative I think it turned out pretty cute. I have this on the top of my dresser. The edges are a little bit more jagged than I would like, so next time I might use an X-Acto knife to cut the top and bottom edges after gluing them on to trim them so they're all the same height. It was still a really fun project and a way to upcycle something from the thrift store and incorporate some scraps of cork fabric. 
So I was inspired by this end table at my home. I love the hourglass shape. So I grabbed one of these foam balls from the Dollar Tree and I wanted to make a candle holder that mimicked that shape. First I cut the foam ball in half, then I took some black spray paint and painted each half of the sphere. It didn't apply very well, so I ended up dabbing on acrylic paint. Because the foam is made out of lots of bubbles and is very textured, then I found that the acrylic paint worked a lot better. I took this bolt end that I found in the garage and I found the center of each half of the foam ball. I poked it through each half to create a hole and then I used some permanent glue and filled in each of the holes, then inserted the bolt between each of the two halves to secure them together. I added some extra glue and held it for a little bit to make sure that the glue set. Once the glue dried, I added a LED candle that I had at home on top and this turned out so cute. When I was actually making this, my husband wasn't so sure about how it would turn out if he would like it, but it's actually one of his favorite decor pieces in our house. And the best part is that it only costs $1.25 to make. Next, I wanna show you how to make these candle holders. This is an inspiration photo that I saw on Pottery Barn and was shocked by the price tag. So I headed to the thrift store. There are always tons of clear glass vases at the thrift store for very affordable prices. So I selected two larger size hurricane vases and then two small ones. You'll want the small ones to be identical. I've also seen these small ones at the Dollar Tree. So you'll want these to match and have a lip on the bottom. So that way when we mock the Pottery Barn candle holders, these will sit on top and not fall inside the vase. So make sure when you're at the store to test the different vases to see if they fit inside each other. And one tip that I have to get off those sticky labels from the thrift store is to take a damp piece of paper towel and cover the sticker completely and pat it down. You'll want it to sit for a minute or two and then you can come back and I think you'll find that that sticker will come off quite easily. Next, after cleaning each of the vases, I headed outside and took some spray paint. I wanted a shiny black for the smaller vases. The color I'm using is Satin Canyon Black by Rust-Oleum. So I added two coats of the spray paint to each of the small vases. So after those are dry, that is it. This DIY is complete. I wanted to create a little display, so I had this wooden tray at home. Then I placed each of the taller vases side by side, then placed the small spray painted vases upside down into each of the hurricane vases. And lastly, I added some LED remote controlled candles. I have these set on a timer so they turn on each night. I love the ambiance, the elegance. I think this was a really fun DIY. And this whole set could certainly make a really fun gift for family and friends. I wanted to make another designer inspired decorative bowl. I saw this inspiration photo and found two bowls that had similar shape on the top and the bottom. I glued them together with permanent glue and after that dried, I used Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte Black Spray Paint to coat the top and outer edges of the bowl. This project was less than $2. This could be styled on an entry table, a shelf, or in your kitchen. I put some decorative wooden beads in this bowl, but you could certainly add pumpkins or other decorative objects for the seasons. For this next designer decor dupe, you'll want to grab a foam circle from the Dollar Tree. I used a knife to cut it directly in half, and then I coated each half with black acrylic paint. Next, we'll want to cut the holes for the taper candles. You'll definitely want to use LED taper candles. I found these on Amazon. So note the size of the base of each taper candle and find a tool that works for you to cut the holes. I found this large drill bit, but you could also use a spoon or another kind of tool to cut out the holes for each of the candles to sit in. My recommendation is to start small and then if needed, you can cut 
a little bit more away because you want a nice tight fit for your candle so it doesn't wobble. After the holes are cut, you'll want to paint around the top edges as well. And next we're going to secure the two halves of the candle holder together. You'll want to use something strong. So I have these bolts that I found in the garage. I just eyeballed to find the center of one half and poked it through one half and then I repeated for the other half to start the holes. After each of the holes were made, I used hot glue to glue the bolt in place. I wanted to add some weight to the base of each of the legs of this candle holder because I knew that the taper candles were heavy. So I took some extra bolts and I simply just pushed them up into each of the ends. And here's how this project turned out. I think it is so stunning and modern. I don't think anybody can tell that it was DIY'd. For this next project, I wanted to create a poster hanger. So I grabbed some leftover paint sticks and I trimmed off the ends so that each piece measured at least eight inches long, or if you'd rather, you could have them eight and a half to nine inches depending on the paint stick, but you'll want each paint stick to be the exact same length. Then I took some wood stain and I stained each side of the paint sticks. You could also paint the paint sticks if you'd like. For my poster, I plan on leaving this hanger on permanently. So I'm going to use some hot glue and glue one stick to the top and one to the bottom. Then you'll take a piece of twine and glue it to the wrong side on each end of the top paint stick. Then you'll glue two more paint sticks over the wrong side of each attached paint stick. If you want your poster hanger to be removable so you can switch out posters, definitely check out the blog post on our website called DIY Easy Wooden Poster Hanger. I share some tips on how to use magnets to make it removable. These can make a quick last minute gift for baby shower, birthday, wedding, graduation, or any occasion. These would be so fun to create a stunning gallery to feature in your entryway, bathroom, bedroom, or craft room. For this next project, we're going to be making a Studio McGee inspired picture frame. So I found these at the thrift store. There's always so many frames to choose from. I liked the square style and there was a set of two. For this project, you'll need some string and also some tacky glue. I've already went ahead and spray painted each of the frames white to give them a nice base coat. Then you'll want to cut multiple pieces of your string so that they're long enough to wrap from the front of the frame all the way around to the back of the frame. You'll want to make sure to add a generous amount of the tacky glue to one side of the frame and I spread it around with my finger to make sure that each segment of the string would be adhered to the frame. So then you're simply going to line these up all in a row, make sure that they're nice and straight and even with the outer edge of the frame. And first we're gonna add these vertical lines of string all the way across the left side and the right side of the frames. I let these sit overnight to dry and then the next morning I was ready to add the next segments of string. So I rotated the frame and I was gonna add more vertical strings opposite of the original strings that I added so add some more glue and then repeat the same process just as before. To complete this project, I did continue to reference the inspiration photo from Studio McGee to add the strings. This project took me so, so long, but the results are so good. I absolutely love it. It has a coastal, modern vibe to it. I love the texture of the string. I think it was totally worth it. But to be honest, it probably took watching four Marvel movies to complete these. Plus, by the time I added the string and wrapped it around to the back, the glass did not fit inside the picture frame. So I took it to my local glass company and they were able to trim down a quarter inch from the outer edges. And I believe it cost me only $7. So in total with the frames, I'd say that these picture frames cost me about $6 each, perhaps a little bit more, and a whole lot of time 
but it was fun to do a project to work on in the evenings and again I absolutely love how they turned out. I was inspired by this designer picture frame but I actually found this mirror at the thrift store. It was six dollars. First I taped off the mirror with painter's tape then I mixed together some white and beige paint for a soft, creamy look. After the paint was dried, I took a ruler and a Sharpie to mark the lines. They don't have to be spaced perfectly. I just went off the inspiration photo and I think it looks organic and is a fun piece of decor in my hallway. So which project was your favorite? I would love to hear in the comments below. Let me know if you're enjoying these scrap friendly, beginner friendly projects. If you do decide to make any of these projects, we would love to see your creations using hashtag Sally Tomato on social media. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.